Welcome back. We're going to look at our final grammar section today and we're making this one a little bit more challenging as we're in part three, which is the more difficult part of the speaking test. And we're focusing on complex sentences. So boosting your grammatical range in order to help you achieve a band seven or above. So why is complex crucial? Well, to remind ourselves of the band descriptors, here is what we need to do to achieve a band seven in grammatical range and accuracy. We need to use a range of complex structures with some flexibility. So you can see that complex sentences are then a vital component Subordinating conjunctions. That sounds a bit strange. What are these? Well, subordinating conjunctions are the linking words that join up a dependent clause to an independent clause in a complex sentence. That's what a complex sentence is. It's when a dependent clause joins up with an independent clause via a subordinating conjunction. So here is an independent clause. All children should learn to play an instrument. We have a subject, we have a verb, we have a completed thought, and that's that. when we add the dependent clause on to the independent clause. Although they shouldn't be pressured too much into doing so, all children should learn to play a musical instrument. It's as simple as that. Subordinating conjunction used within a dependent clause and then attach that dependent clause onto an independent clause. Subordinating conjunctions are so important to us because they are the key to consistently offering complex sentences. Let's have a look at the following. People should care more about the environment. The polar ice caps are melting and the planet is warming up. This will lead to serious consequences. Grammatically, this is accurate, but it's not complex. There's no complexity here. And you can hear in my intonation, um, which we're going to look at in the next lecture, by the way, intonation, but all of my sentences, they go down, they go down, they go down. There's no variety here. It's not very natural to speak like this either. And so we need to have complex sentences. Let's look at a revised example. Because the polar ice caps are melting and the planet is warming up, People should care more about the environment. If they don't start taking the environment seriously, there will be serious consequences. Now notice the intonation here changes as well. When I get to the end of a dependent clause, my voice goes up a bit and the planet is warming up. Da -da, da -da, take the environment seriously. Da -da, da -da, and then down at the end of the independent clause. Again, we'll look at that a bit later too. So. The trick here is to start one sentence in your answer with one of these subordinating conjunctions. Now the rest should follow fairly naturally. Try not to overthink it. This does take practice though. It will require a bit of practice. Do you think it's possible to be too competitive in I want you to think about how you might answer this question using one of these conjunctions. So you just start, you throw it right in there, offer the dependent clause, and then follow it up with the independent clause. So we've got even though, whereas, as long as. You may need to take some time to think about this, and that's okay. We're just practicing right now. So pause the video, see if you can come up with your own ideas for how you could create three sentences using each of these conjunctions. And when you're ready, you can hit play. Now 
isn't everything and you can become too obsessed with victory. So we're using this contrast, they're great for, for introducing contrast. Whereas some athletes do whatever it takes to win and end up taking steroids and other performance enhancing drugs, Involved. So you've got a lot of contrast going on here. That's often why we use subordinating conjunctions, but we do use them in other ways as well. I would recommend looking up a, a list of all the subordinating conjunctions and trying to memorize why we use each one. That will give you so much more flexibility in the exam. The other form of complex sentence that can be incredibly useful is the conditional sentence. So this is a great Is sunny at the weekend, I go biking. Here it's just present simple with present simple. Really simple, zero conditional, the easiest one to use. The first conditional expresses what is likely to happen as a result of an event. Example, if we don't learn from the past, we will suffer in the future. So here we're using the present simple in that first clause and then we're using will or will not plus the infinitive in the second clause, in the uh, independent clause. The second conditional is used to talk about the results of impossible, imaginary or unlikely, hypothetical events in the present or future. Example, if the country closed its borders to tourists, the economy would not survive. So here we use the past simple in the if clause, and then we use would or would not plus the infinitive in the result clause. Finally, the third conditional is used to talk about an imaginary result of a situation in the past which did not happen. So this conditional is really used to talk about the past. And we form it like this. If I had learnt another language as a kid, I would have travelled a lot more than I have. So in the cause clause, we use the past perfect, and then in the result clause, we use would or would not, plus have, plus the past participle. another language as a kid that's also okay now let's have a look at some examples of using such conditionals in answers here's a question some people say that parents should encourage their children to be competitive at all times do you agree with this and why or why not you may want to just take a moment here to think about how you would answer this question let's have a look at my response personally I don't agree with this Encouraging children to be competitive all the time but will not lose self-esteem when facing failure. What conditional are we using here? That's right, the first conditional. We have the present simple, if parents teach, and then in the result clause, we have will and the infinitive. Children will still work just as hard. And you can see here that what we're doing is we're developing the initial idea. A good way of showing why parents should not always encourage their children to be competitive is to look at what happens when they do the opposite, when they teach their children the value of just hard work and learning, not being competitive. We look at the positive of that.
Okay, so it's a great way to develop ideas. It's also very useful in um, essays in task two. Let's have a look at the same question but using a different conditional. If instead parents taught their children, their children would still work just as hard but would not lose self-esteem. Okay, what conditional is this? It's the second conditional. Now why is it that we can use both conditionals? Well, it's because they both make sense in this response. So the first conditional is to talk about something that's likely to happen, and that's true. But at the same time, you could also argue that this is a hypothetical or imaginary example, and thus the second conditional is also appropriate. Second conditional is arguably better because it's a little bit more complex grammatically. Um, but sometimes one or the other is only appropriate. So do be careful uh, to make sure you're including the appropriate conditional. mortgage it's so much cheaper however the problem is that you need to have a lot of money to begin with which most people just don't have in my case if I had bought a house instead of rented I would have been able to grammatical range and remember you can always implement these conditional sentences uh, into your listing strategy and your discourse marker strategy as well.